Hey, what's up, everybody? We got Sister Luna, mashallah, coming in for the FGC on MBC Game 3 video. If you like the videos, like, subscribe, comment, share, support the channel if you want. I appreciate it. Thanks. I'm going to do another one of my, my, I guess, my yearly video of how I would change Karnov's Revenge, potentially. You know, when people ask me how I would change a game. And this is something I've said for many, many years now. But it goes along, and we'll say it again just to keep the channel active, but it goes along with when you make a game, when you make a product, you want there to be a specific reason that you can get this product. If it's a fighting game, maybe it's because you can only get this character in this game if you play this game. Or maybe what I'm about to talk about, you can only get this perspective or meta of a fighting game if you play this game. And how could you throw a different spin on fighting games? You would go even further with what is already a sort of fundamental idea of Karna's Revenge and that we have these random dizzy spots, right? Every character has their own dizzy spot. Basically, it takes three hits to dizzy the guy, right? Now, some people don't like this because maybe you have a quotation marks bad dizzy spot. Oh, maybe it's easy to dizzy me, whatever. Oh, this character has multiple hit moves, so it's easy if that was a character that had like a, a stomach dizzy spot. Oh, it's too easy to hit that with this character, right? But, you know, there's also like jigging and stuff like that. I don't know what the community calls it now, but, you know, a lot of the info about the game, how it even fucking works is from me, so... I'm going to call it jigging because it's what I called it when I was explaining how the game worked years and years ago. So jigging, right? That kind of stuff exists, but what if we're making this new version of Karno's Revenge, and let's say that instead of taking three hits to Dizzy the guy, let's say that it takes five hits. But the real kicker to this is you can only be dizzied once a match. Not dizzied once a round, once a match. Now, when you take a game that calm when dizzying is already such an integral part of the game and you add this little asterisk mark to it, just like actually like sit down and think about the this like layer of complexity that it could potentially add to the game. If we're to take a character like Mizuguchi, let's just say, if I'm doing a hurricane kick loop after hurricane kick, you know what I mean? You can link with any kind of light attack, right? So I could do this. Well, that's aimed at a dizzy spot for one character. That's aimed at one dizzy spot for a character. That's aimed at one dizzy spot for a character, right? We have these different moves that are, excuse me, you know, we can aim for dizzy spots. And that's what I said. One of the, excuse me, sorry, just ate a little bit and I've been tired. One of the beauties about Mizuguchi is he's one of the few characters that can show off the game. And you want a character to be able to show off the game to the audience, right? So, unfortunately, to play Mizuguchi to that level, again, I've never seen anyone do the stuff that I've done, like we're actually aiming dizzy spots like when I did back in the day. But still, you want more characters to be able to show off your game like that. So if you actually had a meta in the game where you could only be dizzied once a match, not once a round, Think about how aiming your dizzy spots becomes important, not just for Mizuguchi, but for every single character in the game, right? Let's just say I'm, I don't know, I'm any character, right? And we got this mysterious dizzy spot. And if I hit him three times, you know what I mean? On his feet, he gets dizzy, right? Well, guess what? Maybe I get him to the end of the round and I'm winning by such a large lead that I'm, you know, I'm far back. You know what I mean? I'm checking with my different attacks and you're like, oh, fuck. Do I want to waste this potential dizzy spot on this round? Because then I won't get it the next round. Same with Storius is like, I got a good lead right here and I could, I could check with this, check with this, check with this. And you're like, oh, fuck. And I'm like, I'm already winning by so much. Do I really want to check with the duck little kick that might dizzy him? He, the dude's only got 10% life left in the first place. I don't want to waste this dizzy here. So maybe I'm going to try to check more of jabs. You know what I mean? And then guess what? Maybe though, Mastorius comes back. Maybe Mastorius, because I was afraid of checking him with duck little kicks, he was actually able to come back and beat me. And you're like, oh, fuck. Now he won that round, right? Or, you know, maybe let's say I did win that round then, right? Now, that's a huge advantage because guess what? The next round starts and Mastorius only has to be hit once for me to dizzy him and to go into some huge combo, right? Do you see what I'm getting at? There's actual, like, combo choices here if you were to, like, change the game like this. And it actually shows off what is already a sort of gimmick of the game even more so. This also helps the people that complain about, oh, this character, you know what I mean? He dizzies so fast because he has a multiple hit move that always hits my dizzy spot. Well, that I remember there's no move. Well, actually, you know, okay, Ray's lightning tackle can hit five times, right? 
You know what I mean? But uh, I think Ray's lightning tackle can hit five times. Is it four times or five times? Maybe Ray, Ray's lightning tackle can hit five times. But anyway, if you think about a character like, oh, Mizuguchi hit me once with a fucking hurricane kick and it dizzy me out, right? Yeah, I guess Mizuguchi's man. It shows how long. It's been a while since I've played the game, right? There, there you go. So I guess there's a, a couple moves that do hit five times. But generally speaking, you know, you're not going to get one-shotted by, like, say, Mizuguchi DP or some shit like that. God, I'm sorry, man. It's been a while since – it's been a couple years since I've had this game in, actually. So it's been a while. But, um, you know, that kind of sort of tries to help the game a little bit because you're like, oh, fuck. You know what I mean? Like, oh, I'm going to get dizzy too fast. You know what I mean? Because you have one move. You just you can dizzy me off one special. Well, guess what? Maybe Mizuguchi's like this. He's like, oh, fuck. I don't want to dizzy you with that hurricane kick. Yeah, I mean, say we're versus a character that dizzy pot is their stomach and the character's about to lose. You're like, boom, 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 boom. Guess what? You're versing Sam Che. And you're like, oh, fuck. Sam Che's only got 5% life left. And I just hit him with hurricane kick. One more hit is going to dizzy him. So you're like, oh, fuck. I want to link to this instead. And guess what? Imagine you miss that link. Sam Che then throws you. He comes back and he beats you. Because you wanted to save that dizzy spot for the next round. Because you knew then you only needed one hit to dizzy him. And that was going to be almost your freebie ticket. Do you see how this adds like another fucking layer to the game that is not possible in any other fighting game? You know. I guess it could be because you could add this to another game, but right. It's a new perspective. It's a new meta. And when you're selling the product to the consumer, that's what you want to do. And if you want to get even real wacky, I've talked about this. Imagine you're Mistorius, right? I'm Mizuguchi and I came back and guess what? The next round starts and I saved my dizzy spots wisely. And the next dizzy spot is going to kill you or something. It's going to dizzy you, right? Well, what if you added in some sort of arbitrary command, like down four times, four punches or shit like that, right? Whatever it might be. Down four times, you know what I mean? Four punches, you know what I mean? You added in some shit like that. And that's an arbitrary command, let's say, where your character just, they get hit, and then let's say they do an amnesty. Ooh, they just knock themselves down. It looks kind of goofy, and they lose their dizzy spot, but they don't have this huge dizzy thing. Now, what would that do? Imagine this next round starts with Mistorius, and Mistorius is, is worried, oh, man, the next hit is going to dizzy me. So guess what this character does? He's trying to work his way in, and guess what? Maybe he saves himself, and he hits a sweep, and then he does this arbitrary command where, boom, he falls down, and he knocks his own dizzy spot off. And then now he restarts the round, so to speak, or he stands back up. Guess what? Now he can't be dizzied that round. He wasted his dizzy spot. Now, that might suck because, oh, I swept and, you know, maybe I swept and I, you know, oh, I wanted to go for some, oh, God, that shows how long it's been since I've played the game. Jesus Christ, it's been a while. I'm sorry. Holy shit. I don't remember the timing of this game. <laughs> I don't remember. Jesus Christ, dude. It's been a couple of years since I put this game in. I don't remember the ambiguous jump fierce cross ups. But <laughs> the point is, you know what I mean? You knock the guy down. And you're like, oh, fuck, do I want to do I think I'm going to be able to steamroll this guy with a mix up over and over again? Or do I want to play it safe? I knock the guy down and then boom, my guy falls back a little bit, but I wasted my dizzy spot. So now I don't have to worry about this character coming in like Mizuguchi then actually hitting this dizzy spot and then doing some huge hurricane kick loop, killing me outright. You know what I mean? Do you see you could actually take the foundation sort of of this dizzy system in the game, jigging, moving your dizzy spots while you're being hit? You know what I mean? You could go so fucking far. Imagine it. You imagine if you go even further, like, oh my God, let's go another level. What if he knew that I knew that he was going to do this? So I'm versus a character like Ray. Normally, Ray wants to jiggy when he's getting hit by hurricane kick. So he holds down, but he knows that you want to save your dizzy spot for the next round. So he knows that. So then he stands up where normally he would be trying to get away from the dizzy spot. So then he gets dizzy. So then you're like, Oh fuck, you made me waste my dizzy spot. So now I don't get it the next round. Do you see what I'm getting at? It sounds fucking ridiculous, but guess what? You could fucking do it. And that's never been in another fucking fighting game. There has never been that level of complexity of meta in any other fucking fighting game ever. And that's how you sell a product to a consumer. And that's why I say one of the problems with this game is that, you know, Crimes Revenge is not the greatest game ever. You know what I mean? But the truly interesting characters of the game, like Mizuguchi aiming dizzy spots and everything like that, you know, that's just not really an easily digestible narrative to someone that might look at the game at face value, right? You don't see, like I said, people, when, when I played the game, you know what I mean, way back in the day, whatever, you know what I mean? People 
had only ever even showed that they could do Mizuguchi's Link Hurricane Kick. It was a couple Japanese guys when the guy was dizzy. No one was doing it off random hits like I could. No one ever showed that they were aiming dizzy spots, right? No one had ever fucking done that before. No one was showing that that was possible. And then the Japanese like, oh my God, you're the fucking greatest person ever in this game. Well, they didn't say fucking, you know what I mean? But whatever, right? But, you know, that's one of the problems that, you know, the truly interesting characters are like Mizuguchi and Karnov. Karnov is in the narrative and Karnov, there's a meme about him because he's just that competitively important. But Mizuguchi, to show off the game like that, it's just not an easily digestible thing to the consumer. But if you add this little asterisk mark to the Dizzy system, guess what? You understand that. And you could see why there could be so many fucking layers to the Dizzy system which is already interesting in its own way. And again, you could, there's other things you could do. Like you could actually add something like, oh, well, it takes five hits to dizzy, guy, dizzy the guy, but maybe if you only hit the guy, let's say three times, you know, as long as your guy's headband, whatever it isn't flashing, the next round, maybe you'll gain a dizzy spot or something. You know, you could toy with it a little bit, but excuse me, hopefully you get what I'm getting at. And besides that, you know, speaking of Karma's Revenge, I'm, I can tell you, you know, because I, I was talking uh, to Daimo about this, and I'm trying to see, can we, is it possible to find out how many people, how much people made from those fake GoFundMes and everything? Because if you remember, the Carnage Discord got mad that I beat them without playing the game in 10 years, whatever the fuck it was. Played the game like once in 10 years or some shit. Oh, you beat us under a fake name. That doesn't count. Eh, we got to get you banned. We don't like the way you talk. And then there's, there's that guy trying to say that, oh, Clayton harasses transgender people and everything like that, which is funny because remember, I showed videos that they were harassing me. I never did anything to them. And then since I got banned from the Carnage Discord, guess what? That person, guess what? Uh, yeah, they got canceled. So, no, I actually have never gotten an apology from the Carnage Discord, even though they were trying to say that I was harassing all those people, which, again, you can watch the videos. You can see I was the one being harassed. And it's just funny that they kept going along with that lie, and now it's actually come out that that person, guess what? Yeah, it was all fake. But they scammed other people. It's so it, scamming Clayton for profit. Okay. Oh, we got scammed by them too. That's bad. Now we're going to cancel them. Oh, they're not a great person. Uh, we, we better do something to them, right? So I was actually just thinking, and let me know if you know, is it possible to see how much people actually made from all these GoFundMes and fake Patreons and shit like that? I, I've been thinking that would be an interesting thing to do. And, you know, so many people have been a part of it. It's just crazy. Anyway, if you like the videos, like, subscribe, comment, share, support the channel if you want to. Appreciate it. Thanks. The end.